Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious Father, it is with both great joy and great sorrow that we call upon you this night. Great joy fills our hearts as we peer into the manger to see the Word made flesh, your Son, our Savior. Yes, this sight also causes us sorrow, for we know that it was because of our sinfulness that he had to leave your side. Lord, have mercy upon us. Gracious Father, we have no right to stand before you and ask for anything. But for your son's sake, we fall before your throne and plead for mercy. Christ, have mercy upon us. Gracious Father, with the Apostle Paul, we confess that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Spare us, O Lord, who confess our sins to you. Lord, have mercy on us. His wonderful mercy, God promised to send his Son to be our substitute. Again, in love, God accepted the perfect life and innocent death which Jesus offered on our behalf to atone for our sins. Therefore, on the basis of Christ's work and God's own promise, I, as a called and ordained servant of God, declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight in our worship, we wish to meditate on some of the beautiful songs of the season. Many times I fear that the music of the Christmas season just becomes background music that we hear in the mall, on the radio, in our homes. And that's about as far as it goes. How sad. How sad because these anthems also tell a story. Not just any story. They tell the story of salvation. They tell the story of sin and grace. They tell the story of a father's love, of a son's obedience, and of the spirit's power. I pray that God would bless us as we hear and sing the greatest story ever told, the story of salvation. Of the Father's love begotten. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? It was the love of the Father for a sinful world that caused him to send his Son into this world of sin. Scripture and this song remind us that he did that even before he created the world. His love for his creation would not allow us to destroy ourselves. And Jesus was there too at creation his love reached out to us. He saw as Adam and Eve succumbed to the temptation of the devil. But his love, like the Father, would not allow himself to see us die. Indeed, we owe him praise evermore and evermore.
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Amen. Throughout the Old Testament, God used his prophets to keep the promise of the Messiah alive in the hearts of his chosen people. The prophecy of the branch has its background in the promise given to David. The promised one was going to be an offspring of David, the son of Jesse, true man and true God. Indeed, this child of Mary felt our human woes and conquered all our foes. And he would be the one who would bring us at last to the bright courts of heaven and to the endless day. done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of David. Amen. Kings are born in royal palaces in the capital city. They're adorned even at birth with the finest linens and silk befitting their royal status. But not this king. No, this king was born in royal David's city, tiny Bethlehem. He was not even born in a room or a hotel, but in a stable and took a manger for his bed. Indeed, his first coming was lowly and humble, but watch out. When he comes again, he will come in power and glory at the right hand of his Father. Then he will lead his children to the place where he has gone. Heaven is our home.
of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Amen. No one can tell the gospel message and song quite like Martin Luther. His solid theology comes out in every one of the songs that he wrote. He recognized how important music is to the Christian. That is why he said, next to theology, I hold music, the gift of we hear him talk about the shepherds as they saw the glory of those angels. Now they listen to the announcement of the birth of Jesus in David's town, Bethlehem, just as Micah had foretold. Then he tells us in very simple language what the birth of this child would mean for us sinners. How Jesus would make us one with the Father again, sin, death, and the devil could harm us not. But comfort fills our hearts as we sing. You shall and must at last prevail. God's own you are, you cannot fail. To God forever sing your praise with joy and patience all your days. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. 
Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Amen. <coughs> We know that angels are God's ministering spirits sent to do his bidding. It was the angel Gabriel that went to the Virgin Mary in the town of Nazareth to announce to her that she would have a child, the Christ child. And now the angels gather to announce the birth of this miracle child. Can you imagine the shock and awe of the shepherds as they saw and heard these heavenly creatures? Can you imagine listening to the song they sang? Can you? You can. Because it's the same song that we sing today. Glory in Excelsis Day. Yes, glory be to God. <laughs> that first Christmas, there was a lot of beauty to behold. First of all, you had this beautiful baby, the angels singing their songs in perfect harmony and pitch, the shepherds humbly worshiping at the manger, the star in the sky announcing the birth. It was also beautiful, but the beauty doesn't last. Forty days after Jesus was born, he was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph, as was the custom of the law. And in a way, the scene turns ugly. Remember how Simeon, that man of God, was promised that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And so moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple that day. And when he saw Mary and Joseph and that baby, he took that baby in his arms. And he speaks those beautiful words, the Sovereign Lord. As you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people, a light for revelation of the Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. But that peace that he spoke of would come a cause. For he told Mary, this child is destined to cause the rising and falling of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Yes, this child was born to die, and this child Jesus would have it no other way. 
His life or yours was the only answer. Nail, spears would pierce him through. The cross he bear for me and you. As a Christian, if you like looking at the manger, you'll love looking at the cross. Thank you. 
We hear the reading of the Christmas Gospel from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the, flock in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Gospel of our Lord.
Spirit, be and abide with you all. Amen.